This video is brought to you by Capital Edge Australia. I, like most footy fans, were watching on with a wry smile as Footy Classified tried to convince us for some reason that Tom DeConning is a free agent. Spoiler alert, he isn't. Carlton's compensation would be via a trade. So if you can't get something right, do it yourself. I'm going to do it myself. Let's talk about Tom DeConning's future and where I expect that he's going to be playing in 2024. And I'm going to do it properly. So let's do this. So like most of you, I do agree that if I was another club, I would not be paying Tom DeConney 800 grand a year for five years, as is the number that is seemingly going around social media at the moment. However, I'm going to put that personal bit aside because if you want to lure someone out of a football club, you have to go overs. If you don't understand that at this point, I can't help you. You need to overpay to get someone out of the club, especially that drafted them. If someone's already moved clubs, it can become a little bit easier. I think of someone like a Blake Akers, for example. But let's talk about Tom DeConning. Let's talk about TDK, who at this moment you would be paying on potential and not output. Someone like Luke Jackson had turned that potential into output with a great grand final performance, as we know. And Tom certainly had some good games. Had some great games. Not denying that. But four million for five years? No, not for me. But Let's look at all the clubs. So all the clubs are there on the screen. Don't stress. I'm not going to talk about all of them. That's not the point of this video. Let's eliminate already the clubs that just do not need a ruck forward hybrid. And that leaves us with these clubs, per my opinion. Now, there's two clubs here that really stand out that they will not have the salary cap to afford him at all. And I'm going to eliminate those in a sec. The reason why I'm going to keep Geelong and Sydney in this graphic is because they keep going under the salary cap somehow and I don't understand it but they're going to stay on the graphic but I'm going to eliminate the other clubs and these are the ones that are worth talking about in my opinion these are the ones that I could absolutely see going after Tom DeConning with varying degrees of success or assets that they could offer the Blues so let's talk about them and what other order to do by alphabetical I'm going to save Carlton till last so let's start with the Pies can't argue with the fit for the Pies. Darcy Cameron, very good ruckman, not denying that at all. But Collingwood do have a lack of tools that aren't, you know, Darcy Moore. Yes, Billy Frampton and these guys, Dan McStay, are pretty good tools. But someone like Tom DeConning on paper would seem like a really good fit. Where I think he falls down in terms of the fit at Collingwood is I don't see him as a number one forward yet. Carlton, he's third, obviously, Colonel and Mackay. You're going to have to be a really good forward to take the mantle away from either of those two guys, regardless of Mackay's bad form at the moment. But he's never really shown that number one key forward um, part of his game. But Darcy Cameron hasn't really shown his ability to be a second ruck because he definitely is a first ruck and a very, very good one, of which not only fantasy and super coach players can attest to, but just the simple eye test. He belongs as the number one Ruckman. So whilst it might be a list need for the Pies for his type of player, I'm calling it unlikely not happening. Tom DeConning will not be at the Pies. Let's talk about the Bombers. I love the fit for the Dons. Yes, Sam Draper as the number one Ruck. DeConning would fit that forward group. They've already got a number one forward in Peter Wright. Essendon have got a war chest when it comes to the salary cap, so the 800 five year, if that's the number that we want to use as our template, can definitely become that for the Bombers. And I think that they could give up their first round pick because it's not going to be a pick in the draft like they got with Elijah Sardis last year, who was very good in the VFL last week. But what they could do, the Bombers, is they could give up if they finish, you know, pick 10, for example, they could definitely give that pick 10 up, get Tom DeConning and potentially another asset back. Now, whether that's like a third round pick or something like that, the Bombers have really done well in developing their youngsters outside of that 2020 draft. Perkins is coming along nicely, but Cox and Reed are still struggling a little bit with their body and form, but no one really drafted that well in 2020. It doesn't seem yet you know, you look at Errol Goulden's the best player out of that draft. He was pick 32. So, you know, let's not chop my head off here. These players are still developing. It's going to take longer. So I don't really regard that draft as a bust for the Bombers yet. But for the other guys that they've seemingly brought in, they're building a really nice list and building something nice under Brad Scott. It's one of the better fits for mine. I really like Tom DeConning at the Bombers. 
but like most Bombers fans, I am presuming, I am worried about the fact that they might overpay him. Now, for the Cats, how are they going to afford him? Well, they don't really overpay anyone. I know Jeremy Cameron, for I think two seasons, I could be wrong on that, was getting over a million a year because that's how his contract was structured. But they weren't really paying anyone else massive money. The success, the lure of the club, the culture, the ability to get more and more players in the door was how Geelong were able to stay such a good team for such a long time between the years, of course, of 2007 and this year in which they've only missed the finals once in 2015, I think it was. The conning to the Cats makes sense. His brother's already there. They need a Tom Hawkins replacement, although De Koning is more athletic than he is a wrestler on which Tom Hawkins is, but that is underselling Tom Hawkins as a player who can do everything that your tall forward can do. But the fit's really good. Geelong could still go after potentially a bustling, muscly forward and let De Koning and Cameron be an absolute nightmare for opposition defenses with their athletic ability. I don't think you can discount Geelong here. How the hell are they going to afford him? I have no idea. Can we please get someone to look at the books at the Cats for the last 15 years? Because none of it makes sense. But hey, they're still an option. They'll probably always be an option. And if the Cats get Tom DeConing, I think the league might actually implode. The actual fit for North Melbourne for mine was actually better maybe a month ago than it is now. Now, I'm not saying Callum Coleman-Jones is the answer. But presenting guys who can help Nick Larkey is how this North Melbourne forward line is going to grow. They have got an abundance of small forwards. They have got an absolute abundance of them. Now, Tom DeConing in that side, without Todd Goldstein there, because we're going to assume that Todd Goldstein is not going to be there, obviously, year two of the deal, potentially year one, but he's playing really good footy at the moment. I'm not really a fan of retiring blokes, so work with me there. But Tristan Sherry is going to be a ruckman. Callum Coleman-Jones can be a second ruck forward. He is going to be cheaper than Tom DeConing is. But you can't deny that the talent and the athletic ability would appeal to North, who aren't really paying blokes big money, I hope. But I'm less on this one. North are probably the second least likely, maybe, behind the pies at this point. But they are a team that I am seeing floating a little bit on social media, so I thought I'd address it here. But for mine... No way does he go to North. And for the Tigers, I love the fit. I really do. I shouldn't love the fit that much. For those that know the channel, or me personally, depending on where you're at, you know that my missus and her family are massive Richmond fans. So talking about good things for Richmond is always with a grain of salt because they've already happy. They've won three of the last six damn flags. But Tom DeConing fits the Jack Rewalt hole if he does retire at the end of the year. He and Tom Lynch would be a pretty decent tall forward pairing. But do the Tigers think Samson Ryan and Toby Nankervis are going to be the answer long term? Probably. The amount of investment they've put into Samson Ryan, especially this year, leads me to believe that that is the path they're going to go down. With Taranto and Hopper and potentially Harry Himmelberg coming in, that makes De Koning's fit less likely. But in terms of on paper and if they can make the money work, I think Richmond's kind of an underrated destination. I don't think it's going to happen, but the fit would be good. But again, they're probably around that North Melbourne area for mine in terms of fit, but still worth talking about, I think. And I think one of the clubs that will be thrown about during the trade period as a potential destination, that might be a bit of a red herring. Well, the Saints, the fit is obvious. Rowan Marshall will become that second tall forward or De Koning will become that second tall forward. And effectively, they will just swap depending on what happens. Or, of course, they'll ride the bench a little bit. But Max King cannot be tried as a second ruckman. Caminiti will become your third tall forward, I think. Tim Membry will still create that half-forward flank role that I personally think he needs. I don't know what St. Kilda's salary cap is at, but off the top of my head, there would be some guys on decent coin because they did have, apparently, according to the media, so take it with a grain of salt, a little bit of a bundle with their salary cap a few years ago, and they were pretty close to the top. I hope they figured that out now with the amount of youngsters that they've brought in in the last couple of seasons. I would imagine that they're in a pretty decent spot. I don't think Jade Gresham and Jack Billings are going to be there next year, which would open up some coin as well. I think playing at Marvel Stadium a lot would suit his athletic ability. I think that Ross Lyon might see it as a bit of a problem. He likes his guys to be quite 
defensive. I haven't seen a lot of defensive nows from Tom DeConing at all. I, I can't really explain why I don't think the Ross Lyon DeConing fit is one that stands out to me on paper, but St. Kilda as a destination are definitely wide open. And between sort of Carlton, obviously, and Essendon, I think St. Kilda were right there on that podium in terms of fit. Probably like Essendon a little bit more of a fit than the Saints, but I definitely think those two are the main threats, if you will, to luring him out of Icon Park. But could the Swans be a genuine smoky? With media reports that they're targeting guys like Aaron Norton, potentially could be going after Ben King down the road. Clearly, they are looking for an athletic tall forward, of which Tom DeConning would be that. They also don't really have a lot in terms of the ruck stocks. Lachlan McAndrew is trying his guts out. Peter Laddams was definitely not it. And I think Sydney know that. But Tom DeConing is a fit with Logan McDonald. I don't think Logan McDonald's there in terms of being the outright number one forward. And I think where Tom DeConing goes next, he's going to need to be the definite number two forward, if not number three, and keep expanding. He is not ready to take over a forward line yet. I don't think Logan McDonald is either. I think Sydney is kind of a trap destination for TDK, if you will. But again, the Swans, they're clearly looking for a player of his position. So they're obviously going to be a team that probably comes up, but it's more unlikely than likely for mine. And of course, we finish with the Blues. Now, will the Blues be able to afford that 800 for five years? Now, I don't think that's what they're going to offer him. If I'm Carlton, I'm saying 500 for three probably, but my mates know that I'm a bit of a tight ass. I probably don't understand the market as much as I should. I'll put my hand up for that. But there's something about paying Mackay, Kerno, and DeConey, and Cripps, and Walsh, and these guys a big, big amount of money, and Carlton not having the role players that are needed for a flag. Think of Hawthorne, for example. Hodge, Mitchell, Roughhead, Franklin, Rioli. Awesome. They don't win those flags without your Xavier Ellis's, without your Liam Shields, without your Matt Spangers, if you want to go down that path. Grant Birchall was never paid like a superstar, albeit he was one. Matt Suckling, Taylor DeRay, these guys that were able to pinch hit and do their job bit by bit to build towards a flag, while the likes of Lewis, Mitchell, Burgoyne were always amazing during finals. Look at Richmond. For your Cotchins, your Martins, and your Rewalts, they needed your Dan Butlers, Dan Riolis as a youngster, your Jason Castanias, these guys that weren't on big money, Jack Graham, to get the job done at times, in moments. And if Carlton run out of these guys that could potentially come in and do that, they ain't getting that premiership number 17. So whilst I think Carlton would want to keep TDK, even though they signed Pittenet to a four-year deal, they can't be held to ransom, and I don't think they will be. But if I had to give you, say, my top four, circa SEN, when it comes to their uh, team power rankings, I would probably say Essendon would be the most likely destination for TDK. Then I've got Carlton, then St. Kilda, and then probably, honestly, the Swans, although I don't feel great about that. But what do you guys think? Comment below. Let me know. Special thanks to Capital Edge Australia for sponsoring this video. If you want to check out their free book, Becoming an Educated Property Investor, you can go to the link in the description and it helps support the channel as well, as well as helping you be educated into getting into the property market in those special spots around Australia. Take it easy, guys. I'm so happy Thursday night footy is back. Hopefully, it's a good weekend for you all. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.